Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, October 9th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Microsoft's first Windows Phone 8 devices will be available for pre-order in the U.S. on October 21st. CNET has learned that a Google Nexus 10-inch class tablet is in the works, and Google is offering a plea to developers to create better tablet apps. Joining us now with breaking analysis on some of today's big headlines is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome to the show, John. Good morning, Kristen. So Microsoft announcing that some of the first Windows 8 devices are going to be available for pre-order in the U.S. October 21st. Can you tell us about some of the new devices that will offer the Windows 8? Well, Microsoft has been rolling out a, a number of devices for this launch. Um, I think there, there's a good amount of anticipation to see what how this is going to play out. We've seen uh, tablets, and now we're seeing some of the phones come out. Um, there was also uh, an announcement that some of these um, mid-market uh, tablets are um, also on the way. So it, it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, now, from the phone perspective, I think that uh, um, they're, they're really going to need to shoot for the high-end. Um, you know, uh, customers expect high-end phones, high-end features, um, high-end camera, uh, high-end displays, and, and things like that. So we're going to see... Uh, some real, real good offerings, I think, uh, in the, the this particular uh, announcement is the first of a, of a number that we'll see. Any idea on the number of devices that will offer Windows 8? Um, no, I think under, under 9, 10 at this point, as far as the phones go, um, I think that, uh, you know, a, a, a good lineup across all the carriers, you're going to have two or three devices per carrier. Um, and, and some of those will be in common. So they're, you know, we don't really know what their end lineup is going to be in terms of, you know, across the spectrum. But um, you can expect that. Um, I mean, I know you just heard the droid here. Um, when I was looking for my phone, I was looking for a Windows 8 phone or hoping that a Windows 8 phone was on the horizon. Um, and those are um, a little bit darker times there where we, we had no idea. But now that these announcements have come out, I think that you'll see a lot of consumers are going to be curious about it and when they turn that corner and see that these devices are you know pretty neat and pretty intuitive um, I think that you're going to see a, a big uptake on these. Now do you anticipate there are going to be a high volume of pre-orders on these new devices? You know that's a great question I think that um, you know Microsoft has done a great job at uh, marketing um, and rebranding themselves um, I think that they'll they'll try to exploit some uh, alignment with uh, some of their, their marquee products potentially here. We'll see some promotion along with uh, Xbox, um, you know, just an all-out barrage and try to make something of it. And I think that, you know, that's pretty much where they need to be with this. So, We've heard a, a lot of mixed reviews and even some negative feedback prior to the Windows 8 unveiling. What do you expect consumer reaction to be to these new phones? I think that... Um, when people get their hands on the phone, that'll really be the the big thing. And the question is getting it getting it actually in people's hands. Um, I think that they've they've done a lot with the um, functionality aspect of it. Um, again, slick hardware is really going to be the the key differentiator here. Um, so I think that you know that that there will be a, a big interest in it, and I think that that's really going to be the things that distinguish the the phone from the rest and how successful this launch is. We know the pre-order date is going to be October 21st. Any idea when the phones will be available in store? Uh, there's reports that it'll be available in early November. Um, so, and that's just in time for obviously the holiday season. Um, you'll probably see some really cool phones coming out with uh, cool color schemes and things like that. So, you know, they're they're shooting for a hip market, not just a, a black phone or a corporate phone, if you will. Um, I think that that's part of their strategy as well, um, is, is going after that. So um, I think November, holiday season, all these things, they line up and make sense. CNET has learned that a Google Nexus 10-inch class tablet is in the works. The 10.1-inch right. tablet will have a higher pixel density than Apple's third-generation iPad. So how much better will this display be? You know, all these things are uh, like a neck-and-neck -neck race, um, you know, um, Apple comes out with a little bit more, the competitors come out with a little bit more, much like the phone market. 
I think that, uh, well, what they're reporting is that this new Nexus will have greater performance than the Retina iPad. Um, so you'll have a, a high um, density, the uh, PPI, which is the pixels per inch. Um, so you can expect them to kind of uh, to extend that line a little bit more. Um, you know, what that means in the end, you know, uh, we don't know. But we, what we do know is that this is a high-end device, and we're looking at uh, some high-end features on it. Absolutely. With the upgraded Retina display, is that something the consumer eye will actually be able to tell the difference on? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I think that um, what you're going to see is the technophile bunch really, you know, looking at those things, the, the bottom line, feature per feature. Um, you know, it, it, it may not be distinguishable to the average person, but the technophiles will be the ones that really you know, take this to the that um, that next level, right? Of uh, you know, hey, this device has got this feature and it's better than this feature, and it's you know, if it's some moderately detectable, uh, it will remains to be seen what that means in terms of adoption long term. Now, you mentioned the tablet is projected to be a high end device. Can you explain what high end device means in terms of price for consumers? Yeah, you know, um, Apple really sets the the market there, so that's that's what everybody shoots for. They're they're the dominant tab tablet, so you know whatever you know whether it's 16 gig or 32 gig or you know whatever the scale of the the highest end um, tablets are, um, and in this case being Apple um, at, at the moment, um, that's what's really going to set the market. So. Um, you know the price will fall in line with that. My um, Apple will probably adjust at some point, as you know, there'll there'll be a price war, just like anything else. Google will be partnering with Samsung on this device, and it'll be a co-branded uh, device with Samsung. So, what's the significance there of the partnership? Well, it's quite significant considering um, Samsung's uh, uh, background of uh, litigation with uh, with with um, um, Android with uh, Apple. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, Google aligning with Samsung, uh, you know, they do it already on the Galaxy Nexus. Um, so it's, it's a, a strengthening of that relationship with Samsung. And I think that we're going to see uh, you know, products along those lines. Um, and we're going to see, you know, we're going to um, and it's coming to the tablet market. Android tablets began appearing about a year and a half ago, but the company is still having trouble getting third parties to design applications optimized for their larger screens. Can you tell us why that is? Yeah, um, well, a lot of uh, developers have not been very um, quick to adopt um, to a larger tablet space. So uh, the big complaint that you see is a lot of developers um, have not really created uh, applications that are suited well for the, the tablet. So um, so a lot of the things are like just blown up versions of, of phone apps. And I think that might be the, the biggest thing that, that the issue that, that's going on right now. And now Google is attempting to resolve the issue uh, by putting out a tablet app quality checklist, and that's going to be designed to assist developers in creating better tablet apps. Can you tell us what kinds of guidelines uh, the checklist mentions? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a, um, it basically starts out, it's a checklist. Um, it addresses the, the layout, um, the quality of the, the core apps, um, whether the application uses a, a full screen. Um, asset utilization, there's a whole list of things like that. The fonts, um, that was particularly interesting. Um, so, you know, all those different elements that make for a great tablet app are, are part of the checklist and um, reportedly they're also continuing to, to uh, offer assistance and um, best practices. Um, so there's going to be additional guidance uh, apparently throughout the week uh, for developers to optimize their, app, their apps for the tablets. So. With the previously discussed rumors about Google pushing their own hardware further, do you think this is a move to set the bar higher for other hardware? I think so. I think that there's uh, definitely a, a push um, a, to address the quality of uh, the, the entire ecosystem, including the App Store, clean that up um, to give a, a better experience. They definitely want to you know, uh, make a, a, a bigger push into the, the higher quality tablet space. Um, so I think that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great effort. It's a great effort, and we'll see how effective that is in the long run. 
Well, John, thanks so much for your input this morning, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Good, have a good day. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.